Today we're gonna to pour one of the biggest lost foam castings I've ever done. We're gonna melt down some old hose couplings and extinguisher parts that I've been collecting over the years and even some of the failed castings. And we're gonna bury this in sand and then we're gonna pour the aluminum over top of it. Of course, there's a lot more that goes into it in the background than just what you're seeing in the video. And this should be left for the professionals. However, I thought I'd entertain you guys and show you how I do the process. I'm taking this dry sand and filling the specially made box. Now, there's really nothing special about the box. It's just a really well-constructed container to put the sand in. And then I'm gonna run this recipsaw over top of it. And this recipsaw's purpose is to vibrate the sand and basically to pack it down. By packing the sand down, by vibrating it, it's gonna stop a lot of unwanted movement of the sand. Now, I've created a, basically a bed underneath it, and then I'm gonna put these bars in here now, the purpose of the bars here is to stop the sand from bending the mold. Now, this is a 24 inch round mold and it, there's a lot of flex that's gonna happen in here. So I have to be very careful and take my time as I fill this up to make sure that I don't bend that weak foam and kind of distort it. Because if I do distort it, it's gonna be shown in the end casting. And as I'm filling it up here, I'm making sure that I'm getting it just a little bit more on one side than the other, but I'm also making sure that the foam isn't bending in the middle. Now, in case I didn't say this earlier, the foam was covered with a white substance, which is basically a watered down drywall mixture and left to set for three or four days to make sure that it's thoroughly dry. Because we wanna make sure everything is super dry here because as we know, water expands 1800 times its size. And if you pour molten aluminum over top of water, or it even gets near it, there can be explosions and fireworks and all kinds of sadness. So we're gonna make sure today everything is super dry. And if you're curious how the plaster coating goes on, in some of my other videos, you'll actually see that process take hold early on in the videos. And I even have another video on how I make the plaster itself. So now that I got it vibrated down and it's about 90% full, I've got a really good feeling about this. Everything's looking pretty good. I mean, that sprue is a little bit close to the plywood there, and I'm not overly happy about that. But in the end, it doesn't actually end up being too big of a problem. The problem that I have in the first casting stems from something totally different, and we'll get into that in a bit. So the purpose of the tin can is pretty simple. This is going to be a catch basin that's going to catch the aluminum. And throughout the process, which I'll explain later as well, I can't let it run dry. I'm basically going to fill that soup can right up with aluminum and then keep it full until the whole process is done filling. Now, let's start up the foundry and get things kind of rolling here and get this turned into molten aluminum. Once again, moisture is kind of our enemy here with sand casting and I'm just going to preheat all of the couplings that have been sitting out behind the shop for about 10 or 15 years and I'm going to make sure those are thoroughly dry before I put them into the molten aluminum lest we got an explosion or something. And because I'm melting a bunch of old aluminum, there's quite a bit of dross or waste that kind of floats to the top on everything. And it's pretty simple. It's just a matter of skimming this off and throwing it in the waste pile. Now, let's take this crucible out of here and get ourselves set up for a really cool pour. Now, like I said earlier, the soup can was a catch basin for all the aluminum, and we want to make sure we fill this up. And we also want to make sure that we don't bump it or move it during the whole process, or we'll cause a collapse of the sand on the inside of the mold. And speaking of that, um, well, guess what? And now it's just a matter of sitting on the back deck for 30 minutes and waiting for the mold to cool down. It's important to let it cool down, not only so that it's not molten aluminum when you pour it out, it's also important because that's gonna be hot inside and it'll still be subjected to like cooling temperatures and you can get a bit of bowing on the big surfaces. Say one side gets cooler than the other and all of a sudden you got a banana shaped kind of plaque. This all has been learning through the trial and error process and a lot of studying and a lot of reading. And it's a really good thing I wore my PPE today because there's a lot of nasty that's coming, coming off of this process here. 
lot of that dust and maybe some of the chemical residues that are coming off there, I really want to make sure that I'm protecting myself from all of this. Let's have a look and see what we got out of this, and then we'll talk a little bit more about it. So remember back when I was pouring it and I had that little slip up where I just touched the cup with the crucible? Well, that's this is the end result of what ended up happening is I wound up collapsing that sand mold there and consequently ruining everything. But lucky for me, I've got a spare backup and we'll jog you through the whole process one more time and we're going to nail it on the second one. In fact, we're going to nail it so good we're even gonna two-part epoxy it and do all kinds of cool stuff with it. The thing that I enjoy most about building and creating things is, is there's always something to be learned. And remember, you only learn from your mistakes or your failures. And then once you can reflect on your mistakes or the failures and figure out why it went wrong, you're gonna be way further ahead in the long run. Now, let's melt down the last of our hose couplings that we had kicking around behind the shop. And let's melt these down, skim the dross off, and then we're going to pour another one of these bad boys. And I assure you, this time it is going to work, and I'll tell you why. Because we're not going to bump the cup with the crucible. I also flipped the crucible around this time so that I wasn't skimming the dross off and I got more of an aggressive pour to get the aluminum in quite a bit faster. Also, hey, remember, the cost of admission is a big thumbs up. I really appreciate your guys' support. And the support is what drives me further to make cooler and cooler videos for everyone out there. Now while it's still hot, I'm going to pull that cup off there and we're going to use that metal again for something else. And then I have 30 minutes of coffee on the back deck and waiting for the big reveal. By far, this is one of best castings that I have ever done to date and I am pretty pumped about this and the best part about it is this is going to get even better because I'm going to two-part color epoxy this which is going to make this thing go from like wow to absolutely amazing but first let's enjoy it in its kind of bare bones stock first and then we'll show you the two-part epoxy 